Howdy gang and welcome to your 12th Git and GitHub tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how you can fork a repo on GitHub in order to contribute to some kind of open source project. So then, sometimes when a developer makes some kind of new project or framework, what they do is open source it which basically means they make their source code freely available to other developers online. Now to do that, they'd probably use a service like GitHub and create a public repository to host their code on so that other developers can see it. And that's really cool because it means that other developers can then contribute to that code, work on it in their own time, develop new features, and overall the project is going to move along much quicker than if just one person was developing it. So that's really cool. So it works a little bit differently than if you were working in a team on a repository and I'm going to show you how that works now. So I want you to imagine we find this cool kind of JavaScript framework online called AwesomeJS Source. I've just made this repo on a different dummy account for now. And we take a look at this and we know that we can improve it, right? So what we want to do is download this repo to our computer, make some changes and then push these changes to this repo right here. But we can't just do that because we don't really have access to this repository. It's not been granted to us. Because if you own this repository and this framework, you wouldn't just want to give anyone access to it so they can just upload branches all the time or even update the master branch. You don't want to allow them to do that. So instead, what we need to do is something a little bit different. So if we come across some kind of framework that someone else owns and it's open source, what we can do is we can fork that repository. And basically what that means is it's going to create a copy of this repository from this account, from NetNinja1's account, to our own account. So let's fork that. I'm going to click that fork button right there. And it says forking NetNinja1. And this should just take a few seconds. And now you can see it successfully forked that so that now on my account right here, I have this repository and now what I can do is I can clone this repository to my desktop. So what I'm going to do is come to clone or download and I'm going to click this to copy it to the clipboard. And we've seen how to clone a repository to our local hard drive. All we need to do is come to our terminal and we need to navigate to where we want to clone it. I'm going to go up one level and I'm going to clone it right here. So I'll say git clone and then paste this URL in. So that's going to clone it now to my hard drive. And then what I'm going to do is go into that directory. So that directory is going to be called um, awesome.js source. So we'll say cd awesome-js-source and we're going to go into this directory. Okay, cool. So now we can say something like git status just to make sure everything's fine. Yep, yeah, we're on the master branch and it's all up to date. So now what we can do is we can open this project in Atom over here. So I'm just going to click Alt to get that menu and then go to open or add project folder. And then I'm going to go to recording and it's called awesome JS source. So I'm going to open up this repo right here. Cool. So now we have access to the main JavaScript file and also this source stuff in here. So what I'm going to do is just come under here. And I think what I want to do is console.log your crap website is now awesome. So this is my addition to this library, which was already really, really good. <laughs> so basically, all I've done is make that one change. Now, normally what I do is I take out a new branch to make this change and then push the branch up, etc. But this time, what I'm going to do is just stay on the master branch just for simplicity and for the sake of this tutorial. So anyway, now we've made this change. What I want to do is add this change. We need to say git add, and then I'm just going to do a dot to add everything. Then we'll commit it, and we'll leave a message to say uh, improved um, awesome JS. And then what I'm going to do is push this now to the origin. Remember, when we clone a repo, like we cloned the one on our uh, account, it automatically sets up that alias origin right so it knows where to push to so origin and we're pushing the master branch so once i push that up i should be able to see it on my github account but let's just give this a second to give us some feedback cool that's all done now let's go to the github account so now if i go into the source folder and i go to awesome.js i can see that the eddie i created is now there 
Okay, and remember, this is all on my account. This isn't the original repo for the framework. I forked this to my account, cloned this repository, and then uploaded the new addition to my repository on my account. And now what I wanna do is I wanna contribute this change to the original framework, the original repository. So how the hell do we do that? Well, let's just go back to the main page of this forked repository. And we're gonna see this button right here, new pull request. So if we're happy with what we've done and we wanna add this functionality, we wanna contribute this to the main repository, what we can do is click this new pull request. And that's gonna check if this can be merged, so it can. And what I wanna do now is say create pull request right here. So it's gonna pull it into the master branch of this thing over here, Net Ninja one right because that's what we're pulling into this is the original framework where the repository is located so I can leave a comment here if I wanted to blah 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 and I can go down and I can create this pull request so once I've created this notice I cannot merge this not from here because I'm not allowed to do that if anyone could just merge into this then anyone could just edit it at any time without the original creators knowledge uh, so the original creator is going to have access to who is allowed to merge, basically, and he has to review or she has to review the changes. So I've opened this account in a different browser. And if I refresh now, and if I take a look at the pull requests, I can see there's one pull request right there. So someone wants to make a contribution. So I can click on this and I can view what they want to contribute. I can see the files changed and I can see they've added this console.log thing right here. So if I'm happy with this, what I can do is I can write a comment if I want. I can say, yeah, good. Don't know what accent that was. Okay, and I can merge this into the main branch, the master branch. So I'm gonna confirm this merge. They've made this framework 10 times better. And now if I go to this original repository, I'm going to notice that the awesome.js file has now been updated with my contribution. I feel so special. Okay, so there we go. That's how you basically contribute to some kind of open source project. Now, every different open source project is going to have different guidelines for contributing. And normally, they're going to have some kind of file in their repository called contributing, uh, contribution or contributing dot md so i'd advise you always to read through those first of all because there will be some kind of guidelines you have to adhere to um if by the way you just want to play around and fork a repository i've created one on my account and you can do that and that is called git playlist so if you want to fork this and just add some different commits you know try and pull request into it if I like it, then I'll merge it. At the minute, it's just a ninja.javascript file with a console.log, so it's entirely uh, a blank canvas for you to play with. So yeah, feel free to go ahead and add to this. Imagine it's some kind of cool new framework and do what you want. And yeah, have fun.